liked that one. There you go. And so, to give this morning's encouragement, which we know will continue the celebration of this marvelous Sunday that we're having with our babies, our own pastor, Reverend John Scott, the beloved, please help me welcome him to the podium once again. Thank you, Jane. Welcome, beloved. And welcome once again. And welcome to those who join us on the World Wide Web. Is this nicey? I am so thrilled that Ted and Jody and Smith and Ramon and Alia Peter chose to bring their beautiful baby girls to be blessed here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living on Christmas Sunday, the day when we celebrate the rebirth of the Christ consciousness. And this, this is the whole thing about a holy family. So I want you to think of yourselves as holy families, really. Holy and wholesome and wonderful, and just thank you for for bringing that energy and that love and that beauty to your spiritual home at the temple. As a delicate compliment to um, our, our, our young um, baby girls, you'll notice that your, your cover of your um, order of service has a, a Mexican a folk painting of a black Madonna holding a little girl. Isn't that lovely? And you know, you know, when they talk about Jesus being the son of God, uh, you, you, you might think of it as the S-U-N of God as well. So these baby girls are the sons of God, and they come trailing clouds of glory from realms of light to just be a blessing in our lives and in our affairs. I heard a story you know, about a little girl um, who wanted time alone with her, her baby brother. She was insisting she wanted to spend, spend time with the baby brother alone. She didn't want the parents there. But the parents were suspicious of her motives, you know, the whole sibling rivalry thing. What if she, she did something to harm the baby? But the big sister was so persistent that her mom and dad finally decided to allow her a few minutes alone with him in the nursery. And after they closed the door, as you may imagine, they had their ears pressed firmly to um, the door, listening quietly. And they felt chills when they heard their daughter say, baby brother, tell me what heaven is like. I'm starting to forget. I'm sure about something, my friends. Small children know from whence they came. They are still a part of heaven. As Oprah Winfrey put it, and I quote, what I love about kids is that they come into the world already trailing the breath of angels. Isn't that lovely? On quotes. So I want to thank Alia for the baby's breath uh, this morning, Gypsophilia, um, because I just love that idea of trailing the breath of angels um, and coming. It, it's just, for me, such a wonder. And you know, even the gruffest of men, you can see them soften. Uh, when it comes to a, a baby. Uh, at the prison where Reverend Michael Record and I and Reverend Anne and Carol Charlton um, work once a week, I can tell you with the men that whenever you say, how much you do you have? Me get two. Me say, well, after you get them, you have them. <laughs> well, me give you a pair of shoes today. You get a pair of shoes. But next year when you're talking, you don't say, me get. You say, me have. True, true, true. I said, just close your eyes for a moment and think about those two youth. And when they close their eyes, no matter how angry and how, how depressed and how beside themselves they are, you can just see their features begin to soften. It's impossible to think of a baby, let alone to hold one in your heart or in your physically in your hands and remain um, at that level of angst um, that so many of us carry around. I don't know if you know, but December 30, is also celebrated as the fifth day of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a seven-day observance by African Americans of the spiritual, family, and community values of, and I'll tell you what they are, Umoja, which means unity, Kuji Chagulia, self-determination, thank you. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujama, cooperative economics. Nia, purpose. And Kuumba, creativity. And Imani, faith. 
Well, today is the fifth day, so they're celebrating Nia, which is purpose. By way of background, Kwanzaa was created in 1966 by Maulana Karenga, professor of African studies at California State University. To quote Professor Karenga, and I quote, the celebration of Kwanzaa is about embracing ethical principles and values so the goodness of the world can be shared and enjoyed by us and everyone. A few years ago, I adapted for our culture, the Jamaican culture, a European folk tale which speaks to the principles celebrated in Kwanzaa. So I wrote an Anansi story, which I'd like to, to dedicate to Arya and Senna. Would you like to hear my Anansi story? Yes. Oh, yes. One time, long, long time ago, it was the week before Christmas, and Anansi was up in his favorite Aki tree in the Aki Grove. Now, sitting under the, the tree was a Bobo Dread making a broom. And beside him was a beautiful lady with a baby in her lap. After a while, the lady got up to leave, saying, all right, I'm going up the yard and put the baby to sleep, and then sweep out the house and make some sorrel. The Bubba said, me just have finished the broom, yeah? And then me will come up and help you. Come up and help you? And Nancy said to himself, he was flabbergasted. Did the Bubba really mean, did he hear? A man say he's going to help with housework? No, sir. His ears must be deceiving him. So as the pretty lady kissed the dread and headed off up the hill, Anansi scrambled down to the ground and greeted him. Manning, Bubba. I it's Anansi, replied the dread. Anansi continued. Oh, the pretty lady, Bubba. The dread replied, is my queen Anansi? And Nancy was fascinated. Your queen, he exclaimed. Then you just a lamp, sir? Are you really a go up the yard, go help? The dread replied as he hefted all the brooms he had made onto his shoulder. And Nancy, when you have a queen, you and she help one another to make life together. You see me? Together you work for build your kingdom. And Nancy pondered this new concept for a long, long time, and decided he too wanted a queen. The problem was, he couldn't choose between the three ladies he had in mind. <laughs> yes, gentlemen, I know. <laughs> there was Punsi, Peaches, and the Princess. But which one would make the ideal queen? So he decided to give them a test of character, creativity, and wisdom. He spun three magnificent webs in the Aki Grove and gave each of the ladies $100 and told them to use it to furnish every room in the web and that he would come back on Christmas Eve to see how they had done. He had decided in his mind that the winner would become his queen. $100 to furnish an entire house? It seemed such an impossible task. The first lady, Punsi, was so overwhelmed that she just sat right down on the front steps of the web for a week. <laughs> There's nothing she could do. What do you do with $100? She just sit down. <laughs> There's nothing she could do to make the web, the, 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 the web livable with just 100 a bills, as we say in Jamaica. <laughs> and so that's where Nancy found her at the end of the week. The second lady, Peaches, said to herself, oh, what Nancy think me can do with $100? We just have gone yam it off. For those of us who don't speak patois, patois, that means I'm going to consume it all. <laughs> and so she used the money to buy a pile of junk food. She was delighted with her creative thinking, but the web was totally littered with, with waste and food scraps and smelled so much like a garbage dump that a Nancy had to pinch his nose and drive on past at the end of the week. The third lady, Princess, was a quiet, happy girl. When she saw the web, all she could think about was how great God is to have given this amazing talent to a Nancy. And she sat down in the middle of the empty web and meditated on how she could fill it with love and joy without detracting from its exquisite beauty. 
On Christmas Eve, Anansi entered the quiet web and found that every single room had been made bright and beautiful with a few wild flowers, a peacock feather, or a bright butterfly. He found Princess sitting quietly in the topmost room with a view of the Aki Grove. She smiled and said, thank you, Anansi, for letting me share your beautiful web for this little while. I've been so happy and peaceful here. Anansi smiled and said, Princess, if you will please marry me, you and I will work together to make life and build your kingdom. <laughs> and everything that you are looking upon will be your queendom. But tell me something. What you do with the $100? For all the beauty never costs you nothing. Oh, I used it to buy some callaloo and carrot seeds and some pachow seeds. And I planted a garden at, at the base of the tree, Princess replied. And answer remember that Boba Dread has said to his queen that he, what, what the Boba Dread had said to his queen. So he said to Princess, just give me a moment. I'm just going down to water them. And Nancy and Queenie lived for many happy years, sharing the gifts of their hearts. And they named each of their seven beautiful children after one of the principles of Kwanzaa, Umoja, Kuji Chagalua, Chagul Chagulia, Ujima, Ujama, Nia, Koumba, and Imani. Jack Mandora may not choose none. <laughs> And so, friend, the value of, that is being celebrated today is near purpose. An appropriate value for us to contemplate, I think, on the day when we celebrate the coming of the way, sure, Yeshua of Nazareth, whose purpose was to give us the new commandment, which was what? Love one another. Simply, love one another, my friends. And not just your tribe, not just those you check for, not those that you think have your values, not those that live like you or, or live on your side of the tracks. Love one another. That is the message that Jesus brought. And that is the same message that little Arya and Senna bring us today from heaven. Love one another. That is what the call is. And you know, if you look at that story of Mary and bringing that child into the world, it, it's not just as you read it. That story is really our story too. Because you know, remember, you remember Mary was going about the ordinary things of life. I think she was at the well. And the messenger from God, Gabriel, told her that she would conceive. No, a messenger from God is, me, better, better physically means her higher self, her highest thoughts. You ever going about your business and an idea just come to you? And what happened to Mary was, when ideas come to us and they seem to be outside of our, our scope and our ability to, to manage it, we do what Mary did, we go to, we go to the facts. She said, but, uh, but uh, how can I have a, have a, a, a baby when, when I haven't even known a man yet? Same like when you get an idea and you say, but I, I, I don't have the money or I don't, you know, whatever the resources are you need. And the angel said, don't worry about it because the source, the creator, will provide you with all that you need to bring forth this thing that is your purpose in life. And so my friends, I want you just to think about that because you, you may have an idea that's been gestating with you and you keep saying, no, if I was 20 years younger, or no, if I had the money, or but I don't, I, you know, I can't, I can't do this. That same spirit that Gabriel promised Mary would support her, will support your intentions. And so your assignment, and you know that I always give an assignment, your mission, should you decide to undertake it, is to spend some time today thinking about your purpose. What am I here for? Don't think about the hereafter. Think about what you are here after. And just know that your purpose is supported by the awesome 
omnipresence, omniscience, and omnipotence of your source that sent you and that never ever forsakes you. So that's your assignment for today. And I want to end with, with something that Ernest Holmes wrote in his magnum opus, The Science of Mind, uh, about the purpose of the Christ. It's from a chapter called Finding the Christ. Then spoke the child, and I'm hearing Senna and Arya. I come to bring peace. I am the child of joy, and to all who will, I give life. I am formed of happiness. I am come from the eternal stillness. Quiet and confidence are mine. In the heart of the Father, I have lived forever. O nations and all people, look unto me and be saved. Behold my face shining as the sun and my feet shod with righteousness. In my left hand are riches and honor and in my right, peace forevermore. All that I am, all that I have, I give. And perhaps, my friends, that is your purpose, to give all that you have and all that you are to life. Would you say to your neighbor, it has been a blessing sharing this celebration with you. Namaste. It has been a blessing sharing this celebration with you. Namaste. It has been a blessing. Just your neighbor, you know, not the whole, the whole temple. It has been a blessing sharing this celebration with you. Namaste. Namaste.